time for another cowboy fast draw rig. And today we're making an Eastwood style rig, which means the ends of the belt are tapered. And I used different weights of Wicked and Craig black skirting. And I lined the belt with some SB foot Mojave leather in desert sand. This one was made just a little bit differently from the last one because the cowboy fast draw rigs are still a little bit new for me. And so I'm having fun just exploring and trying out different techniques. I'm excited for this one, so let's get started. I used a few different weights of black Wicked and Craig skirting leather for this project. And for the belt liner, I'm using some three to four ounce SB foot Mojave leather from District Leather Supply. I'm using a heavy weight 10 to 12 ounce leather for the belt and some medium weight six to seven ounce for the holster and some lighter weight three to four ounce for the holster liner. The first thing I did was take the heavy weight leather and cut a three inch strap for the belt. Then I found a good spot on the medium weight leather to lay the holster pattern out and trace it out with a scratch off. These marks are the start and stop points for the first two stitch lines I need to run before folding the holster over and stitching it together. And by the way, the pattern I'm using is a modified version of one of the patterns from Tandy's holster pattern pack. I'll have a link down below. This knife is much better on lighter weight leather, but since my pattern had some tight corners, I decided to use it and just be okay with potentially making a couple passes on some of my cuts. Now I'm cutting a three quarter inch strap that I'll use for the cartridge loops and another strap that is one and three quarters of an inch wide for the cartridge loop base. I wanted to give the ends of the base a nice little English point, but since my strap end punches are only designed for up to one and a half inch straps, I couldn't use them for this. So I just decided to cut the ends manually. I'm using the no stitch method to make my cartridge loops. So I figured out beforehand for 45 Colt, if I punch my holes every 5 eighths of an inch using about 6 to 7 ounce leather for the loops, that seems to give me a really snug fit. I did a quick burnish job on the strap before I weaved it through. I'll explain my burnishing method later on in the video. Then I line up the straps and use my scratch awl to make a mark where my holes will be punched for the first rivet. Once the holes are punched, I use my craft tool hand press from Tandy to set the rivet in place. I wet the strap down quite a bit on both sides before weaving it through. That way when it dries, it'll really lock into place and even contract a little bit as it dries to give it a really snug fit. And by the way, if you're trying this on your own, don't use spent cartridges because they're larger in diameter and you'll get a more sloppy fit. I decided I wanted to make the base around 20 inches long, so I made sure to cut the loop strap around four times the length of the base so I had plenty of leather to work with as I feed it through. I jumped the gun just a bit and started making marks for my tapered ends of the belt but I didn't want to make the cuts yet until I had attached the liner to the backside. So I decided to stitch on the cartridge loop panel to the belt first, so that in the end, the liner would cover up the backside of the stitch and keep things looking uniform and clean. For a heavyweight project like this, we need a heavy duty machine that's designed for this kind of stuff. I'm sewing this up on my Texo 2750 Pro. The Texo family has been a big supporter of ours and their machines are top notch. The 2750 Pro has been an awesome addition to the shop for projects like this. Most of you know a cylinder arm machine really comes in handy when you're trying to get around tough gusset corners and tricky angles. And this machine has truly proved itself over and over, especially in bag making for me. If you're looking into picking up a machine, give Texo a call and let them know I sent you. They'll help you figure out the perfect machine for your needs and you can use the coupon code STKBRL at checkout and they'll throw in a free accessory package with your machine. Then I lather up some adhesive to the back side of my belt and the back side of my liner leather, let it get tacky, stick it, and then cut away the excess. 
Now I can finally trim down the tapered ends of the belt. There are definitely more methodical, mathematical ways of doing this, but I just mapped out a basic outline with a two inch taper and cut it. It's not a perfect cut because I knew I'd be smoothing things out on my electric sander afterwards. I punched the ends of the belt using a Craft Tool Pro tipping machine. This thing's really useful if you do a lot of belts. It takes out all of the guesswork involved in punching holes for belts and can save a lot of time. However, I didn't use the rounded end for the billet side because I actually want this strap to be shorter than normal and have almost no excess strap past the holes. Now that I've got the final shape cut and punched out, I can sew around the full perimeter of the belt to keep the liner in place. I usually don't like to rely on adhesive only, but that stitch also adds a real nice finished touch to the overall look of the belt. I always get a few questions about what needle and thread I'm using, so to make sure I'm covering my bases here, I'm using a 92 weight bonded nylon thread and a size 18 needle. Now on to the holster. I like to use a liner because it's usually not a good idea to let the flesh side of leather interact with the finish of your gun. So this is where I'm using that lighter weight leather. And once it's paired with the medium weight, six to seven ounce leather, we're working with about nine to 11 ounces total, which is pretty standard for holster making. There are a few steps I have to take care of before I can fold the main body of the holster over and stitch it together. There's a stitch line across the bottom edge and another stitch that goes around the top side of the holster and around the whole curtain. Then of course you gotta bevel and burnish those same areas. My process for burnishing edges is ever changing and that's half the fun for me, trying out a lot of different methods. For this project, I'm starting out with a burnishing agent called Tokenol from District Leather Supply. I lay down a light coat and then hit it with a hand wood slicker. The edge wasn't looking super clean, so I decided to take some 320 grit sandpaper and lightly sand in one direction to smooth out any bumps or protuberances. Is that a word? <laughs> then I slicked it, applied a light coat of beeswax, slicked it again, and then finished it off with a canvas cloth. Then I repeated this along the top edge of the holster, around the curtain, and on the edges of the belt. Since the surface of this leather is pretty smooth, I'm using a Craft Tool Pro Detail Rougher from Tandy to prep the surface of the leather. It helps the adhesive make a much better bond. And while I wait for the adhesive to get tacky, I use a sponge to wet down the area that will be bending to help the holster take shape before I lay down the final stitch. Anytime you have a bulky edge with multiple layers of leather, it's a good idea to sand the edge nice and flat before you make your stitch so that the space for stitch allowance on the edges is consistent on both sides. Now that it's stitched up, I'll attack it with the same bevel and burnish treatment till I have a nice glassy edge. Now it's time for the wet mold. I always like to heat up a little pot of water to work with. Not boiling, just warm enough. The goal here is to get the holster to take the shape of the gun without locking it in like most leather or kydex carry holsters. I want it to stay opened up and even have a little wiggle room in the fit so there's absolutely no drag or resistance when drawing the gun. That's one of the reasons I wrapped the gun in plastic first, but the other reason was just to protect the finish of the gun. Now I just need to put the finishing touches on the band. And I'll give it the same sand, stitch, bevel, and burnish treatment like everything else. Then I'll install the button snaps. And finish it up with this killer buffalo nickel concho. Now back to the belt so I can finish installing the buckle. I'm using a button snap so this buckle can be replaced easily. And boom, it's done. Yeah. 
Thanks so much for watching, you guys. If you're new to the channel, I wanted to welcome you. Feel free to subscribe. Join the Stalker fam. We're a good bunch. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up because that's what helps me know what kind of projects you guys like to see. A uh, quick little disclaimer, I do not make uh, custom holsters or gun belts to sell. Most of the projects that I do here are just one-offs for the channel. But if you want to see the products that we do make and keep in stock, uh, you can visit our website through the link down in the description. I'll have links down below for all of the equipment, tools, supplies, materials, everything I used in this video. Uh, some of those links down below are affiliate links. So if you pick something up through them, then we get a little kickback. And it's the best way to support us. We really appreciate it. That's it. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.